Well, if you have your Bible this morning, would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 9? The kids are going to be leaving at this time. If you're in that age group and you want to go with them through sixth grade, you're welcome to do that. (laughs) That's not you, Ron. (laughs) Some people trying to be younger than they are can go. This morning, like I said, we are kicking off a new series that I'm calling Simply Irresistible. And what we're doing is looking at this idea that Jesus started 2,000 years ago. You know, the Bible says that when Jesus came to earth, that the reason that he came was because God wanted a family. I don't know if you're familiar with that concept, but God wanted a family and he wanted the entire world to be a part of that family. And so Jesus Christ came to earth 2,000 years ago. He went to a cross. He died on that cross. He rose from the dead three days later. And the reason that he did is so that you and I can go to heaven. And it's an amazing thought that Jesus began 2,000 years ago. You know, this movement has drawn literally billions of people over the last 2,000 years that have become followers of Christ. Now think about that. Two billion people. You know, it's amazing to me that as we come to church week in and week out, and a lot of people go to church all over the place, some people absolutely have no clue why they go to church. Did you know that? Some people go out of habit. Some people go out of pressure. Some people go out because it's my responsibility. And yet Christ says, the reason I want you to go is so that you can be a part of my family. The scripture says that we are not to neglect the the meeting of ourselves together, the assembling of ourselves together. And so God says, I want this place to be be a real, I want this place to grow. And and I've called it my my home, my church. And and for the last 2,000 years, people have been uh, coming to church. Now, do me a favor, pull out your outline because that's going to help you with the message today. Looks like this in your bulletin for those of you who are new. This movement that we're talking about has outlasted empires, it has outlasted dictators, it has outlasted philosophies, it has outlasted mockers, it has outlasted false prophets, it's even outlasted internal scandals, if you can believe that, you've seen that all around. It's outlasted that. It's a movement that has brought healing. It is a movement that has started more hospitals than any other movement in the world today. It's a movement that has started some of the best schools in the history of the world. Some like Oxford and Princeton and Harvard. Some of those schools started by Christians who knew the importance of education and knew the importance of getting to know God, the one who created them. And so this movement that we're going to be looking at has one that has been moving along and will continue until Jesus Christ comes back. You know, in the Bible, take a look up here for a second, guys. In the Bible, Jesus says that the gates of hell cannot even withhold it. Jesus said, I will build my church, and no matter what Satan throws at it, the church will continue until Jesus Christ comes back. And then one day, think about it, guys, we're going to go and be with Jesus forever in heaven. And that's an amazing thing to think about, how God wants to take us from where we're at now and take us to his home in heaven. Now, the word for church is the word ecclesia in the Bible. It's the Greek word ecclesia. And it basically means those who are called out or those people or those are the people of God. And like I said earlier, the people of God are not just a place where you come and you spend time with them on a, on a Sunday morning. It is God's family. And the Bible says you and I are brothers and sisters in Christ if you are a follower of his. And so the Bible says that God called us to become a family. Now, what we're going to do for this series is this. We're going to take a look at what the church is supposed to be like. Why? Because I think God wants us to do some amazing things in the upcoming months. I'm going to talk about those at the end of the service today. But one of the things I want you to get this morning is God has called you to be a part of the church. Now, in the Bible, the church means the universal church. Okay, now now get this. It's where you get the word Catholic. That means universal. Okay, there's been a lot of controversy about about that idea of the Catholic Church being the one and only true church. You guys have heard that, right? Read about that in the news. And yet the scripture says that God has called all of us, people who have given their life to Jesus Christ, to be the universal church. 
Get that in your head. All of us are the universal church. That means people in other countries and other languages, people who don't even look like you, people who don't even like the things that you like, people like that. God has called us all to become the universal church. Now, in the Bible, it usually is talking a lot more specifically to a local body of believers. Now, in our association, we have over 100 churches of Southern Baptist churches in this area. I don't know if you're familiar with that. In the, in the Orange County area, there's over 100 different types of churches that call themselves Southern Baptists. And they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And they speak different languages. They don't look like us. And, and, and it's okay because we're all a part of the universal church. And yet God says, I've called a specific people who live in specific areas to be a co- part of what's called the local church. Now get that. There's the universal church. That's every Christian that's ever lived in the entire world that's living today. We're all the universal church. And yet he's called us to be a part of a local church. Why is that? Because God wants to do something amazing in the city of Orange or the city that you live in. And he's going to use this church and churches like it to bring praise to his name. Now get this, guys. The Bible says on top of your outline, take a look at it, top of your outline. It says this in Ephesians chapter 25, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. You might want to write that. I think I left that reference off, but it's Ephesians chapter 4. But it says this, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Now, now get this. Now look at me for a second, guys. The Bible says that Christ loves the church. That Jesus Christ loves the church, the local church, as well as the universal church so much that he was willing to lay down his life for you guys and for me. Isn't that amazing thought? God loved us so much that he was willing to come from heaven, take on the humble nature of a human being, live for his life here, being ridiculed, being mocked, being uh, mistreated. And God himself went to a cross so that you and I can go to heaven. Now, that's an amazing kind of love, one that I don't understand always. And it says this, he gave himself up for her to make her holy. Well, the Bible says that you and I are to be holy, right? As a Christ is holy. Now, what does that mean, holy? It means to be set apart. It means to be sanctified. It means to be different from the rest of the world. And God says that when you give your life to Jesus Christ, now is the time that you start living in this holiness. Now, get this for a second. Now, stay with me. Follow my train of thought. God says that none of us deserve heaven. None of us. None of us. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you, where you come from. It doesn't matter how many times you go to church each week. None of us deserve heaven. But Christ loved us so much that he sent his son so that we can go there. And not only that, so that we can have his holiness poured out on us. Well, what does that mean? Well, Jesus Christ, when he went to the cross, he was a perfect sacrifice of the Old Testament. There was not a sin in his life. And the Bible says that he died in our place. Now get this. Jesus Christ went to the cross because somebody had to pay for the sins of the world. And you and I couldn't do it by ourselves. And he says, not only am I going to do that, I'm going to pour all of your sins all the sins you've ever done, all the bad things you're ever going to do, everything that you 